Hello everyone, I'm Renown Zero, and we're back again talking about Rip Reverse Detractors as we get ever so closer to the estimated fulfillment start date, which is tomorrow, July 31st, as of recording this video. The ISOM number two campaign is currently sitting, as we'll do a quick refresh, sitting at $2.078 million with 11,320 cover A sold, 11,729 cover B sold. 3,722 cover C sold, which is the cover of Isom number two, drawn by Shane Davis. Shout out to Shane Davis. I got to meet him yesterday. And of course, I picked up the con exclusive Starlight Cats cover and Inglorious Rex covers that he had for sale. I also got to meet up again with Cecil and meet Irene, who did the poster that I will show you here which is this one. She did this poster for the Rip Reverse right here, so go ahead and pick that up if you wish to do so. 1,943 cover D sold with over 2,000 books donated to charity, 17,241 total purchasers. So, on Friday, the DP crew decided they were going to try to troll me on my Twitch stream and my Kick stream, which I simulcast every, well, six days a week, Monday through Friday and Sunday. So they felt like they were going to send their little trolls over to my channels and, of course, talk a bunch of crap. You can see it here from Drunken Peasants all the way down to the bottom here, right? So let me just quickly move myself down. So that you are able to see them talking a bunch of noise all in here. But little do they know, I do not care what they do. They're never going to stop me from talking about them, which I haven't really talked about them in quite a bit. They decided they were going to do this on their own. They claim that they're not going to, that their fans claim that they're not telling them to go to my channels and try to harass me which by the way that doesn't work on me I'm a grown ass man I don't I don't really care you decided to make this weirdo leftist meme about me again you can't meme you're terrible at it you just need to quit but let's go ahead to your social blade and see what that did for you oh absolutely nothing it keeps your subscribers stagnant your views are down, and you gain absolutely nothing from that. Once again, continue to do it. It doesn't help you in any way. It just helps me. Sure, there ain't any growth here. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I've got some growth here, which is pretty good. It's actually, 30 subs in one day is actually very good for me. I haven't put out a video in two days, so not really expecting my views to be super high. But continue to... Do what you're doing because all it does is make you look terrible, it makes your fan base look terrible, and it makes me look better. And as I always say, do not interact or communicate in any way, shape, or form with these people or their fans. Let them be and let them continue to make themselves look stupid. So now we're going to jump over to the Ripper vs. Goalpost Twitter account where we're going to listen to a couple videos, going to commentate, and then we're going to get into one of the bigger detractors that Eric July has. The return of the bald headed wench. Let's start here with Saggy Mellon's archives talking about how actual fandom is an actual grifter. Like, what? Like, you're dumb. The fact that you did this and thought you nobody was gonna catch you, you're fucking dumb. Uh, explosive, how you did. Let's go ahead, do this. Like what? Like you're dumb. The fact that you did this and thought you nobody's gonna catch you, you're fucking dumb. Uh, explosive. How these YouTubers are actually making kids less safe. How the fuck is a YouTuber who has two thousand fucking subs on my best fucking like on a on a good video? I would be lucky to get one thousand views on, right? How the fuck am I making kids less safe? Please explain. Why can't you explain it without a paywall? Because they know it's not true. 
and actual fandom really is the actual grifter and the actual ankle biter of more successful channels like Eric July. Why can't you just explain it for free, Dave? How am I making kids less safe? I, I, like, I, this man's dumb. This is a dumb man. This is a very. Yes, it is a very soy filled dumb man. Very, very dumb man. Now people, but thank you guys for always being supportive and uh, there are plenty of other content creators that exist out there. So apparently she quit YouTube after getting bullied by actual fandom. That are real and amazing. I really cannot confirm nor deny that. Amazing and I hope you find them and I hope you support them like you guys have supported me. Um, don't forget, always support the small people because their voices don't get heard because they're small. Um, show them support, show them love, help them grow as content creators. Um, don't don't send your 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 videos of you jerking off to to women unless they ask for it. Uh, and um, just just. That's a weird thing to say, by the way. Be yourselves. Don't let anyone tell you who you are. Don't let anyone try to dictate anything you do, as long as you just be a D That is exact, exactly why people like DP are never going to dictate how I do my content or what content I do. Just don't be an asshole. Just don't be me. When it comes to like... Great advice. Great advice. Alright guys. See you guys later. So that was a good buy stream from that person, Saggy Melons. Moving over to Josh Friedmaster, who thinks, you know, because Angel Studios, the people who created a certain movie that we cannot talk about on YouTube unless uh, or something will happen, says that the Ripperverse movie will go nowhere because Eric will want full creative control. No shit. I would think most people who actually care about their properties would want full creative control of how your property is used. Critics rip it to shreds. No one cares about critics. They're paid shills. They're paid by corporations to give good reviews for the most part. Most of them are anyway. Also, I doubt theaters will even let Angel Studios release another movie unless they get that desperate. Why would they not allow them to release another movie when people are going to watch the movie... People are paying to watch the movie. It's a movie. It, it, they made a movie that didn't have a huge budget and made a huge profit in return. So make that make sense, Josh Friedmaster, Mr. Businessman that I shouldn't be listening to. It's like, dude, just stop while you're ahead. We got pop counterculture. Again, do not interact or any of those things on any other social media. Just let them talk. And we'll talk about it in the comment section down below of my video. Let's get right into it. So we got Lawrence Gilmer, 210LG, shout out. Go follow him on Twitter. Go follow, on you, go follow him on YouTube. He has a podcast called, you know, Emperor, I think it's called Emperor's Crown. Something like that. And he makes some dope-ass music, so go follow him. Well, guess, look at where he's at. Okay. He's standing. He stand Again, I do not knock him for that. I do not knock him for being successful that is not anything i would attack him for but that's what i'm but so where where's the thing is so you're mad because he doesn't have a similar mindset so what mindset should a black person have that that's well, the question I'm not, first of all i'm not remember this is a guy who called who called air july that famous uncle at one point and had no no regrets no he stood by it completely he stood by it completely for calling air july that famous uncle I'm not mad at him for simply having a different mindset than me. What I what I criticize him for is manipulating his audience, right, to keep them in a consistent uh, state of anger and angst in order for him to profit off of their anger. And so essentially, he's telling people that the comic book industry is dog shit. The comic book industry is terrible. They're putting out terrible material. They're putting out material that is essentially propaganda and you're mad about that that would all be fine that would all be fine 
if it wasn't ideological and if it was fact based. But it it's a hundred percent fact based, considering he buys the comic books he talks about. He shows the facts of the dying comic book industry constantly, because he's a very transparent person about everything. It's not the stuff he says. A lot of is when it comes to movies that I can actually speak of is factually untrue or at best half true, right? So that's why that's my beef with him. The fact that he is not so and yet you never prove the contrary to what you're saying. You never prove what you're actually saying is true. So much that he disagrees with me because there's plenty of people who disagree with me that I don't even fucking talk about, right? It's the fact that he's using something that I personally really care about, film, uh, in order. And the worst thing is he's presenting all his like things in a dishonest way or at best half honest way. And all of it is just to manipulate his audience. It's just to it's just to get them riled up and angry so that they'll watch the next video and they'll get more angry and then all of a sudden they're in this weird fucking non reality where the fucking woke agenda is gonna bite their balls off or something, man. I don't even I don't even know what that last part meant, but at the end of the day he's pre he presents facts about what people say in Hollywood about their movies, what people say about the comic books in Hollywood, how they don't give a crap about source material, that they want to just make their own stories up, essentially, and he just calls out the nonsense that he sees. That's a lot, a lot of people on YouTube do. They put their opinion out there to get their opinion out there, and then they put facts. They bring facts to give their opinion, and then they go, well, here's the facts, and then here's my opinion on this. Well, what will happen? That's really all he does. It's not a hard thing to do or a hard thing to conceptualize. But I guess it's hard for people that hang around actual fandom and Bob to have their own mindset. Essentially, a list of a, or a summary of the goalpost shifts that we've had in the last year, over a year. Not reaching a million. It's late. Packaging sucks. Writing art suck. Fans will demand refund. Not sold in comic shops. Fake reviews. It's a call. Second book's late. Won't reach a million again. Site numbers are fake. And it just goes on and on and on and on. No one cares. <laughs> it's That's literally what it is. We'll, we'll talk about this next. This is actually the next thing I want to talk about is the, the ball-headed wench. We're, we're going to go ahead and talk about the ball-headed wench next. But we're going to do this first. We got Guy Abento saying, do you do we want to remind people what the quote comicscape broke me hashtag was about? Eric July, a failed rapper and comic book writer, he never insinuated that he was a rapper. So he was a ghost writer and he made a mixtape that was dope as hell. Failed comic book writer? I don't think so. Making over five million dollars in two books is not a, not exactly what I would call a failed comic book writer. Has resorted to the grift of whining about Twitter drama on YouTube. It's called monetizing your haters. You don't you don't understand how that works. This was after he said "call the herd" in his own words. He didn't think twice about. He didn't think twice as to as it would be referring to him and the creator of Deadpool, who doesn't get any residuals from any merchandise nor the movies that feature the character. If Eric July pitched his quote "ripperverse" to any major studio, he won't be getting his baby back, nor. He'll see any money from it. That's why he's grifting. He's a broken mess from a toxic industry. So because I'm independent, I'm grifting. Holy F. I thought he was replying to something about Eric. This is just an organic breakdown out of nowhere. Beautiful. Yeah, it's called living rent-free in people's heads. It's essentially what I'm doing in some people's heads right now. Where do you, Jones, get your butt hurtedness towards Young Ripper from? It's relentless and shoddy. I know it's not from anywhere good, but I'm just curious. Jealousy, envy. Eric made more than five million by not playing by established rules that at this point are archaic and nonsensical. People like you ought to be following his lead. And I don't think he would go to a major studio to do a movie. He'd probably go to someone like Josiah Rises at the Epicverse to do the Ripperverse. Not some not some major studio that would essentially try to buy his rights out. He's smarter than that. But of course, he responded by saying, I've never understood this quote failed rapper tag because it operates as if being a rapper was some career I legitimately pursued. Haha, <laughs> I'm a metal guy that happens to be able to spit and I certainly wouldn't call this failing. 
So alternative new artist number one, Heat Seekers number two, Hard Rock number five, Rock number eleven, Rap twelve, Independent Label fourteen, Overall Digital forty three, Top Current sixty eight, Overall Physical one twenty three. Which not a lot of people buy physical media as far as like music. So, but now we're gonna move over to Miss Ballheaded Wench over here, Vicky. Excuse me, Kara, did you really just send out an email with the subject line early fulfillment to let people know you were going to start shipping ISOM 2 on the originally scheduled ship date? That is not early fulfillment, by the way. It's an estimated fulfillment date. And the campaign ends on August 27th. So typically when these campaigns end is when, you know, something like this anyway. This is when it would actually ship out on the 27th when it comes to Air July. But... I digress. To which Carolyn, in her awesome fashion of being calm and collected, and not trying to be mean to people, because she's not she's not that type of person, by the way. I understand that you have beef against the company, but don't come at me with your attitude. You and I have literally never interacted, and this is not a great first impression. The campaign doesn't end until next month, so technically this is early fulfillment. We could wait until it ends, but you are, are choosing not to do so and begin getting orders out because it is going to take some time to get them all out the door. If you have an order in and would prefer for me to put a hold on it until after August 27th, I'd be happy to do so, but I doubt that is the case. If you want to have a problem with something, go for it. Throwing a fit over something that, like that is honestly pretty childish. Well, this is the same person that said they were creases in the book. So, which they weren't. But go off and spend your life getting bent out of shape. Totally based. This is actually... You know, no, it's not early. It's doing the bare minimum for on-time fulfillment. Lay off the hair dye. It's affecting your brain. I'm sorry to hear that being transparent with our customers and keeping our on our projected timeline upsets you enough to be nasty to a stranger. Because, you know, of course we have this dummy. It was initially supposed to come out in Q1 and Q2. No, that's when it was supposed to launch, which it launched in Q2, dummy. If I recall correctly, I'm sorry if you had a bad, if you have a bad job that makes you have some, say, have to say someone's throwing a fit when they're merely pointing that out. They're not. They, that must really suck to have a job where you have to compromise yourself. ETA for launch, by the way. You said come out. Well, come out. Yes. It came out in June, I believe. Is when ISOM 2 launch was June. So, what are you talking about, though? You know, it's like the goalpost shifts just always, always, always got to be shifted. Fulfillment during the middle of the pre order campaign would be the definition of early fulfillment. Shout out to Bruce Flash in the chat. Of Eric July's live streams. Five head failed cashier, her parents' dog grooming business that never achieved anything in her life, and is living in an attic of a goodwill shop says, What now? Did you order a book with what little money you have, or are you trying to concern troll? No, she's always trying to concern troll. Remember, this is CG Light. Anything earlier than three years late is considered early. It, it, he's not CG, though. Troll job rating. Shut up, Karen. Always slap head. It's early considering every other indie comic. No, it's early considering that that's what the estimated date was. And the campaign ends on August 27th. So, just say, uh, gross, if you can't act like an adult, at least act like a human being. Just say you don't get along with your parents and spare us your instability, Vicky. At least she isn't balding. She she is. You ordered a copy? How many, how many days cat food did you have to skip to afford that? <laughs> saying she's a crackhead <laughs> wacky hobo i have a simple honest legitimate question for you vicky why do you care about shipment dates or anything else that people who make independent comics do because she's jealous and envy that she can't do it why what is your motivation for constantly attacking independent con 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 content creators it says comments so i was trying to read it i don't think you benefit from it you've done this karen and crap for how many years now and how much positive feedback has it gotten you zero I don't see what you receive from harassing people like this, unless negative attention gets you hot. Probably. I mean, if you're gonna troll, at least be funny. Your crap is lame. Why are you harassing employees, you left-wing weirdo? Why don't you worry about your own stuff? Rip at the tracks is continue to be more most be most pathetic and jealous people on Twitter, and it's beautiful to behold. Which, by the way, I'm just reading the comment. Their mental pain, suffering, cope due to non woke comic business crushing success is out in the open for all of us to enjoy, like finest champagne. Well. I, I, I will disagree on the on the non woke part because it was never marketed that way. Clean this stuff out of your. 
granny panties. Blue hair is stupid and your voice is awful. <laughs> Showing basically what her five head looks like. F off. It has nothing to do with you. Get a life and stop complaining about other people being successful. It's an ugly look. Well, that's what they'll continue to do. That's what the tractors will continue to do. They'll comp continue to complain about other people's success because they're not seeing the same type of success that they would like to be seeing that Air July is seeing. Well, they're not seeing it, so they have to bitch about it. And it's all out of jealousy and envy. So, at the end of the day, we're gonna I'm going to continue to make the content I'm making. No one's going to stop me from making the content I'm making. And the gold pull shifts are going to continue throughout the entire fulfillment process into ISOM 2's end. Like the campaign end and into ISOM 3 and into Alpha Core number 1 and into Yaira number 1. It's all going to be the same old song and dance from these weirdos on the internet because they see someone having success that they don't like, that have different opinions that they don't like, that look a different way that they don't like, that don't tell the, the weirdo line, the, lip, the, we'll say, leftist line. So because he doesn't go through the, the proper channels, that the mainstream does, they're mad about it. And Air July is just gonna continue to win and I'm gonna continue to win because weirdos on the internet ain't gonna stop me. Thank you all for checking out this video. I really do appreciate all the new subscribers, returning subscribers, new viewers, returning viewers. If you do like this video, hit the like button, comment below what you feel about all this. Again, do not interact or comment with anyone I've shown in this video. Leave all of your comments in the comment section down below. Subscribe for more content. Hit the bell for notifications. Set the bell to all. That way you get notifications anytime I post a new video. And I will see you all on the next one. Peace.